my name is Dr. Richmond Lowe and I'm the fish vet. Today we we'll return to this pond. Previously we had a fish present with dropsy, that's the eye sticking out and the scales protruding and we diagnosed the cause of that as polycystic kidney disease. Now we've got another fish that's actually presented with bloat where it's all swollen and we're going to work out what the reason is. There can be a multitude of reasons and today we're going to show you how we're going to do some diagnostic tests to differentiate between the common reasons such as polycystic kidney disease, uh, being egg bound, maybe a tumour or some other chronic infectious disease. And check out this fish. Because of its size, it's been known as Fat Albert. What we want to do initially to see if it's egg bound, we want to see is it a male or female. A lot of people name their pets all sorts of names without knowing if they're male or female. But this guy, if you have a close look, it's quite hard to tell actually. Because in a male, you're supposed to see these things on the operculum called breeding tubercles, little pimples. Um, and you can see there's a bit of mucus there which suggests that maybe it could be a male. It's just that we're, right now we're in winter, the water is freezing. So these sort of uh, phenotypic signs of maleness doesn't quite show up. The other thing is we look at the anterior edge of the pectoral fin. In males, they're supposed to be quite thickened. And in females, they're supposed to be quite thin. Uh, and in this case, it's somewhere in between, so it's still really going to be quite hard to tell. Are you Fat Albert or are you Fat Alberta? So, um, the other thing we want to see if it's egg bound is we look at for symmetry. If we look at him from the top bird's eye view, uh, in egg bound fish, they tend to be more symmetrical, uh, but in this case, it doesn't look quite symmetrical. You can see it's more bulging on the left uh, rather than on the right. So, this suggests to me maybe it's not egg bound, but we need to do diagnostic testing to find out. Um, the other thing we've got here is we've got our hands, so we can actually palpate the fish. Uh, so we press there gently and feel it's got some sort of spring to it. So if, to me it feels like there's fluid in there because it's quite bouncy. Um, so that, that could be egg bound or it could be a tumour um, that, that, that contains a lot of fluid, some sort of a cystic tumour which can be common, um, I guess, with, um, with the ovary. Uh, they can produce quite cystic type tumors that contain a lot of fluids. So we're going to anesthetize this fish and we're going to do some of the diagnostic tests, uh, which is quite invasive. So before we start doing the diagnostics, I'm going to show you what some of the equipment that we need. So of course, we're going to need a microscope because some of these things are going to be really tiny that we're going to look at. Uh, we're going to have a syringe with a catheter uh, that we're going to pass up the cloaca to see if we can uh, withdraw any sort of material uh, if it's egg bound. Uh, and then we've got a needle and a syringe which we will be sort of passing through the side of its abdomen if, if, if the first thing doesn't work uh, to see what sort of cells or fluid we can retrieve from there to tell us whether if it's a tumour and what sort of tumour it is. And if we collect any of those things, uh, we're going to put them onto glass slides. Uh, this way we can actually examine uh, what, what material we get from the, from the aspirates. And if we believe that uh, it's an infectious inflammatory process, uh, we've got some bacterial transport media that we can send to the lab for culture uh, in case we want to grow if we see if it's a bacterial infection. And we've got some um, specimen containers which we can just use for anything keep the tissues fresh or uh, have it with formant fixative and of course gloves. So we've got fat albert um, anesthetized, we just pass the catheter, there are two holes in the cloaca and the one closer to the head is the where the feces comes out and the one closer to the tail is where the reproductive organs and urine comes out. You need to choose a suitably sized catheter and just pass it in gently. And once you're in, you can lightly aspirate. And here, what we can actually see. A 
can actually see here we've got a really orangey amber fluid and inside are little eggs so this guy is maybe not Fat Albert maybe she's Fat Alberta so yeah it looks like maybe this this guy is actually egg bound you can see if we put a little bit of pressure on there more reproductive fluid is coming out and it's orange colored if it's a male fish what you see is white milky fluid coming out which would be the milk which contains the sperm uh, but this is orange fluid you can see it here falling into the water so here I'm just gently massaging her abdomen and you can still see orange fluid coming out so why, why we're doing this is we're reducing the pressure on her abdomen and you can see already it's a lot of congestion with a lot of stretching of the abdominal um, musculature and skin um, and a lot of blood vessels coming through so if we can reduce some of this pressure just by gentle palpation with some gentle massage that would be helpful to her um, otherwise we can pass the catheter through again and see what else we can aspirate so we're trying to see if we can extract more fluid to reduce that pressure on her abdomen um, just need to get them at the right place I think it's with it being winter it's not quite the time of the year to be doing this because um, there's still the eggs are probably held together and the fluid and all that by connective tissue uh, within the ovary uh, usually in springtime when it's time to breed that's when all these things break down and allow free passage of the ovarian fluid and eggs to come through so um, so we might have to revisit this girl uh, later on in the year through at springtime so here I've got the um, sample in a specimen jar and you can see the amber fluid against this white background and you can see these eggs they're not quite nice and round not like what you see when you get your sushi um, so you can see that these uh, eggs are actually quite degenerate so I'm just going to take a few of these put them onto a glass slide so we can view them down the microscope just to, just out of interest oops put a cover slip on and let's have a look so here what we can see down here I'm just showing you down the um, camera down the microscope this is a relatively normal egg you can see it's nice and round with a lot of um, yolk material in there but you can see also little ones and you can see sort of debris type material and then background a lot of granular stuff this is vitalin material which makes up part of the yolk and you can see here we've got degenerate uh, yolk um, and eggs with ballooning type cystic changes to the eggs so these are all degenerate eggs and it just goes to show that uh, this fish has been hasn't voided any of these eggs it's building up in its um, body cavity and it's probably inciting some sort of inflammatory reaction as well um, so being egg bound is not going to be good for the fish uh, and this is some of the changes uh, that you can see microscopically to at least the eggs. So, why did Alberta get egg bound? Maybe she didn't have all the spawning triggers or maybe there's a hormonal imbalance. Unless we treat her, some life-threatening consequences could occur as a result of being egg bound. Some of the examples include um, the eggs degenerating and um, being an area where bacteria can get in and cause an infection. Uh, it could stimulate uh, some sort of a cancer growth um, or it just could grow so large uh, that it starts stretching its abdominal cavity so much um, that it's pushing a lot of pressure on all the organs and causing organ dysfunction. So now we've diagnosed that Alberta is egg bound, what can we do to help her? Well, we can't do anything right now because it's winter, we have to wait till springtime. And although we have this love potion called Overprim, uh, which we would give her at 0.5 mils per kilogram of body weight um, as an injection, uh, this hormone cannot do wonders. It doesn't do magic. 
what we need to do initially. Uh, why we need to wait till spring is for all all the external stimuli to get her into the mood. So we need a warm, warmer water temperatures. So the water temperature needs to be above 22 degrees for a certain period of time. Uh, we need a longer prolonged photo period. That means we need sunlight uh, shining for maybe 10 plus, maybe 12 hours a day. Uh, that will start her hormones uh, to kick in uh, so that our overframe can actually work. Um, and if you can have a look at this pond as well, um, some reasons why fish get egg bound and they don't release the eggs or get into the mood is because uh, some fish ponds may not be built exactly to get them into the mood. So if you see wild fish, wild carp, wild goldfish, um, when they breed, they actually go to the shallows of the pond. Uh, this pond can see, actually see there are shallow parts, so that's, that's a plus for them. But in some koi ponds, they have very long, straight vertical slide, sides uh, that doesn't have the shallow bits. Um, and other thing is that they need spawning material uh, to be able to sort of stimulate them to release their eggs and sperm. Um, and as you can see in this pond, there's not a lot of vegetation overhanging or in, in the pond. Um, so some ways we can uh, try to achieve this is to actually add spawning mops and media in there or plants or valleys, uh, anything that will hang and be able to protect the eggs and make the fish want to breathe in that space. So from Alberta and myself, thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe so you can get all the latest updates from our new videos. Thank you.